Yo, what's up, everybody? Uh oh. Uh oh. News from the world of the UFC. Well, we know right now that the UFC flyweight world title is on the line. The vacated 125 pound title formerly held by Henry Cejudo, who took the title from generally recognized as the former GOAT, Demetrius Johnson, is now up for grabs. Longtime title contender Joseph Benavitez was scheduled to face Davidson Figueiredo of Brazil. A good matchup. Two tough guys. A battle. But today, Friday, February 28th, what happened? Joseph Benavitez, like a champ, steps on the scale. 124.5 pounds. That's half a pound below the weight class limit. Now making him eligible to compete for the UFC flyweight world title. The last athlete to step on the scale was his opponent, Davidson Figueredo, who steps on the scale and weighs in 127.5 pounds. Clearly, two and a half pounds above the flyweight class limit, making him ineligible to compete for the world title. Now, he's given a one-hour allowance to go back and continue cutting weight, to do everything he can to make weight, to make this fight happen, so he does not flush his entire career away. Athletes train their entire life to get one shot at a world title. Davidson got his one shot. And he blew it. He blew it. Comes in two and a half pounds heavy and chooses to not exercise his right of, to, of, of cutting weight for one more hour to lose that extra 2.5 pounds. Big mistake. Davison, big mistake. Now, because he chose to come in heavy, because he chose to not do everything in his ability to make weight, he is prohibited for competing for the world title. Let's he, say he goes out and he dominates Joseph Benavitez. He knocks him out. He submits him. He TKOs him. He gets a unanimous decision. He still doesn't win the world title. If Joe Benavitez goes out there and wins the fight by any means, split decision, majority decision, submission, TKO, disqualification, who knows? If Joseph Benavitez wins this fight, Joseph Benavitez will be the UFC flyweight world champion. Is If Davison wins this fight, he will not be the world title holder. He will simply get a win. Further. How crazy is this? Further, as a result of missing weight, Davison must now forfeit 30% of his purse. 30% he's got to give to Joe Benavitez. Now, Davison normally makes about, I think it's about $50,000 or so per fight. That's he's on that contract. Usually, when an athlete fights for a world title, they usually get a $250,000 minimum flat fee. Worst case scenario, Davison's making 50. He's got to give 15,000 to Joe Benavitez, which means all of this is for 35 grand. If Davison wins, he's got to give 30 grand to Joe Benavitez. But if he's on that $250,000 traditional minimum, which we won't know until after the fight, well, now he's got to cut Joe Benavitez a check for $75,000. How long do you have to work to make 
thousand dollars. If you're the average American, you got to work almost two full years to make that. Well, Davison just gave that up for not doing an hour's worth of work, which is he was granted that one hour. That right there, bad call on his coaches, bad call on Davison, bad call on everyone. Because let's say he struggled and cut and cut and cut and cut and his body, quote, dried up. Well, number one, they fucked up weeks ago if that happened. Number two, by taking the break and going through all the rigmarole of going downstairs and checking in and getting on the scale and standing in line and all that stuff, usually MMA Focus in the House, one of my favorite MMA YouTube channels, gave um, one hour to cut, could have done with the Dolce Method. Absolutely, it could have been done. Without a doubt, absolutely, it could have been done. Could have been done. Now, I've done a little research to see, hey, who is responsible for this? Well, oddly or not, it appears, it appears from what I can see right now via social media on Davison's Instagram account and also as supported by her Instagram account, Dr. Aliyah Correra of Brazil appears to be the nutritionist for Davison Figueiredo. Now, not only a nutritionist, but she is also a medical doctor. Isn't this funny? A medical doctor who also is a nutritionist. I don't know what the credentials would be in Brazil to, to qualify as such, but let's assume that that's all correct. Loading it. And I'm looking at the, the posts here. If you can, hold on, channel, let me switch back my page and my screen so you can see. Right, that was, that post was October 29th is being a part of the team. This post here, December 20th, where she's announcing it on her Instagram page. Here is kind of the, Doctor, nutritionist, sports clinical, general surgery, and digestive system with offices in Brazil. I only say this because, hey, she's a medical doctor. Medical doctors know everything, right? Well, shoot. You'd be surprised at how many medical doctors, those with academic credentials, are responsible for these high-profile weight cut misses in combat sports. Now, we'll all remember when Zero Integrity George Lockhart was responsible for Yoel Romero's infamous miss against Robert Whitaker in Australia when Romero missed weight by less than a pound. I believe it was Romero. Let me see. Against Robert Whitaker, that's right, UFC 225. A world title fight is worth millions and millions of dollars to those who participate. Millions. Did I say millions of dollars? These athletes train their entire lives for this opportunity, and the vast majority, the 99% or more percentage of athletes will never sniff a world title fight. These athletes put themselves in the position to finally fight for a world title, which will change their lives forever. It'll change the lives of their family forever. It will change their family tree forever due to the income earning opportunities. And to blow that due to incompetence, ineptitude, ego, what have you, is a shame. Shame. I hearken back to Game of Thrones. The walk of shame. Now, Davison is a good athlete, a competitive athlete, tough guy, 
But look what happened. The ability to prepare is what makes a champion. The ability to prepare, not just to perform on fight night. The ability to prepare long, long before competition day. The wee hours of the morning. The late hours of the day. All the sweat, all the sacrifice, all the delayed gratification, all the strategizing. All of this matters. No stone unturned. And I feel bad for Davidson. I feel bad. I wish, I wish when athletes miss weight, their nutrition coaches would step up and take some of the blame. Would stand at the very least shoulder to shoulder with the athlete and go down with the ship because all they do typically is they just stand there when things go well. They put their tweets out. They get tagged. They put out photos and rave about how great they are when things are going well. But when they screw things up and things don't go so well, what happens? These weight management coaches, they disappear. They hide in the shadows and they let the athlete alone take all the blame. Win as a team, lose by yourself. That's how these, these, these coaches, these weight management coaches act. And that is a shame. It's a shame. I'm sad to see it. But that's the case. Now, also, additionally, we had uh, Grant Dawson, featherweight, missed weight by three and a half pounds? Are you kidding me? Who has to forfeit 30% of his purse? Are you kidding me? Three and a half pounds over. And what I heard, he came in huge, way overweight, way overweight fight week. Totally unprepared. And which is crazy. Grant Dawson was scheduled to fight a few weeks ago. So more than likely, he's been in camp for an extended period of time. One would think Grant Dawson would have been lighter earlier, making his weight cut Super easy. It's just not the case. It's just not the case. So what do you guys think? Throw some questions over here. I'll answer for the next five minutes in the live chat. I'll do my best, and then I will jump off. S. Ferg, MD, Dave B. in the house, the legend, drinking espresso and listening to Truth Bombs. How's life, Coach? Dave B. Life is awesome. If my life were any better, my name would be Dave B. How about that? Roll with it. We talked a while back. You need that producer. Get those views up. Roll with it, man. Shoot me. Shoot me a DM. Shoot me another DM on Instagram. So much stuff flies through my life. I sometimes lose track. Shoot me that DM. Let's see what you're talking about. Bruce Winchell. Mike, what do you think is the biggest mistake these fighters and teams make when doing the weight cut? They listen to the wrong people. Most of these fighters do exactly what their weight management coaches say. Most of these weight management coaches have no idea what they're doing. That's, that's one of the biggest issues. Most of these fighters get way too fat in the offseason. They don't treat their sport as a professional. They could learn a lot from a, a, a gentleman like Kobe Bryant, like LeBron James, like Tom Brady. They could learn a lot from these pro athletes who train and live like pro athletes 52 weeks out of the year. Combat athletes, mixed martial artists, very rare they do that. What's also rare is you guys smashing that like button. So smash that like button right now. 13 likes when I'm 15 minutes deep into a video such as this. Come on now. Jesus. Ryan Wayne. Hey, Mike from Ireland. You talk so much sense and so many want a magic pill. Magic pills wouldn't even taste good unlike a breakfast bowl. Boom. That is a mic drop. Wayne, I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you. Adam Matos. Hey, coach. I'm in the last FAQ. You mentioned something about being too shredded. How can it negatively impact connective tissue? Can you please elaborate? Well, there's a balance. You can be too heavy. You can be too light. You can be too strong for your connective tissue, right? That matters too. Now, being too shredded means, number one, likely you're running at a, at a severe caloric deficit. And this is where I'll hang my hat. You're running at a severe, severe caloric deficit. 
at a caloric deficit, you are likely at a nutrient deficit. At a nutrient deficit, now you are depriving your body of the vital nutrients it needs to facilitate the um, healthy elasticity and and you know growth and repair of the connective tissue that's constantly damaged through your exercise. That would be one of the areas I, I hang my hat on. Um, MMA Focus just bought your shredded book on Kindle. Loved it. Learned a lot. Well, cheers to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's super cool. That's super cool. Maybe do a review on your channel. How sweet would that be? Boom. And I'm happy to, to assist you guys in any way on or off record. Um, Gregory Johns, what's the coffee maker brand that you have at your house? I have a Nespresso, a Nespresso. We also have a $20 Mr. Coffee traditional drip pot that we've had for like a decade, which is awesome. Um, any brand of vegan eggs recommendations you want? I haven't used it in a while, actually. Uh, I haven't used um, a vegan eggs in, in quite a long time. So I, I'm kind of off the loop on the brands, on their ingredients. Um, what's the best food to eat after a weight cut? What well, water first, most important. And what we say is we back out of our way in or weight cut the same way we pulled in. We don't eat anything different. We basically eat the same foods that we've been eating for the last six weeks or so. Lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, lots of clean burning carbohydrates, moderate amounts of, of, of animal proteins. Typically, um, slowly we kind of ease our way back in. Um, Kyle says, have you stopped doing the 20 minute fitness? No, we're on a small hiatus right now as we are revamping the studio and the um, production uh, for you guys. Better microphones, two, two, two video cameras, and uh, we got to move some of the gym equipment around so I have a better space. We're going to bring in some um, additional athletes to train with me. So production value going up for you guys. Carlos, hey, Mike, what's a good egg substitute in three weeks to shredded? Well, there's quite a few. You could put in quinoa works really well. Um, we have a, a flaxseed like um, ground flaxseed is a great egg substitute to a degree. Um, chickpeas works really well. Um, it depends on the reason why. You know, why are you substituting? Because you just can't eat eggs. You have an allergy. You just want a, a, a palate, a flavor change. Um, really, it matters. That matters. And what else? Boom. Hey, coach. How would you look to help Wilder gain strength in his legs in time for his rematch with Fury? Well, I would never let an athlete wear a 40-pound suit prior to a walkout if they hadn't previously trained and practiced for that, right? What we try and do, what I strongly suggest is during training camp, you want to mimic fight day. So we, we, we try and have our sparring sessions, let's say on a Friday, right? You want to try and mimic everything you do from the time you you get to the gym, you 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 warm up, you shake out, you foam roll, you stretch, you wrap your hands, you talk about the strategy with your coach, you do a little movement, you hit pads, you increase the intensity, bell rings, partner one, go. That's what we try and mimic. So we try and replicate that to the best of our ability in real life and in gym situations. Doing something so out of the box is crazy that nobody in the Wilder camp said for a second, damn. We shouldn't put a 40 pound suit. We can probably have this. I mean, Deontay Wilder is worth tens. Of, he might be worth a hundred million dollars. Tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars. He made a minimum by I think $28 million just to, to, to step into the ring for that fight. They probably could have made a suit that looked exactly the same that weighed four pounds. If he spent a little money, what does that cost to make? I don't know. I don't, 10 grand. I don't know. I don't know what it costs. I know, fuck, I, you know, I go, I go to Etsy, right. For like my kid stuff it cost me like, like $6 to get like a uh, beautiful Halloween costumes made. So I, I don't know for sure. I wouldn't have allowed that. And, um, man, you look at the first fight, Wilder looked great in the first fight. Second fight, he looked like shit. Fury kind of looked like shit in the first fight. Looked great in the second fight. I'd like to see a third fight. Mac pimp need you Dolce diet book, bro. FRDM, I thought UFC Performance Institute was supposed to be handling fighter weight cuts. No, they're there as a resource, as an, an, an asset. A lot of the teams, a lot of the fighters, and a lot of these weight management coaches, their egos are so inflated that they don't work with UFCPI, and they should. 
Um, you have Clint Wattenberg, Wattenberg over there, who is great. You have the angry dietitian. You have Chef Mario. Um, you have Duncan French. Um, you know, you have Heather Linden. Uh, those are just a few of the great names that I know over at the UFCPI. You want to rely on that team to help in any way, shape, or form. Trifecta does a lot of the food prep now for the athletes. It's a shame that they don't. It's a shame that they don't. Um, Shane, let's get a coach 20 minute workouts. My wife and I are ready for more great work. Thank you. More coming soon. Just go back and repeat week one and keep going through Mark Cox. These fighters need the Dolce diet. Ain't that the truth? They all do. They all do. Um, Moist says you're making me want to change my major to nutritionist. Well, I would say if you are in that field, get your bachelor's in nutrition in nutrition science, maybe get, get it in exercise fizz. No problem. Go from there and then decide what you want to do. Do you want to move on into the RD field? Very challenging. You want to be a registered dietitian? That's fine. Don't expect to make much more than 40, 50 K a year flatline. Very hard to get above that. A lot of people go into school, they go 150 grand into debt to become a registered dietitian. It's very challenging for a registered dietitian to make more than $50,000 per year. It's it, the industry gets very pigeonholed. Maybe you can make a little bit more inside a hospital or if you become um, management, maybe you can dump into like 65, very rarely ever. I'd say maybe one in, in a thousand dietitians are making more than 80K a year. That And that's just, that's real data. I mean, you can go on Glassdoor and figure that out too. Um, Dr. Seuss, now if you have a more diverse degree, let's say you have an exercise phys degree, you have a, uh, a, a nutrition, um, um, uh, 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 you know, bachelor's in nutrition, maybe you can really branch out a little bit. Do you want to go into a master's program? Eh, you're, you're not going to get that money back by and large. I should, I would say probably go and get it, get a business degree first you know, get a business degree and then do some continuing education in the nutrition field. That way you can run a business with the, the aftermarket certs at a fraction of the cost. And we talk about this quite a bit in our Dolce Diet Certification and Nutrition Conferences. These are three-day conferences. We are endorsed by the NSCA, NASM, and the AFAA as a continuing education provider. Essentially, I coach the coaches. Our team coaches the teams. You can come in and get certified as a nutrition coach under us, you get the endorsements of the NSCA, NASM, AFAA. This gives you the ability to work with your clients hand in hand with our team of registered dietitians. So there's a lot that we do here once you become a DDC, a Dolce Diet certified coach. And our next nutrition conference will be in April mid-April. So news of that will be coming soon. A lot of people have been asking, when's the next DDC? That will be mid-April in New Jersey. So get ready for that. Dr. Seuss, Uncle MD, F you, F you, Dr. Seuss. Good to see you. And uh, everybody, remember, subscribe to this channel. Boom, boom, boom. Click those little thumbs up. I appreciate that. Thank you. Greg Johns, I was thinking about getting the soy free follow your heart brand. Is that um, fine? I don't know anything about it, but I would stay away from I would go to a hemp protein well before soy protein. I, mean, I would I would consume soy in like zombie apocalypse apocalypse situation. Kyle, thanks Dolce. Love your work. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Shane, what do you think about bang energy drinks? Yuck. Gross. Um, no, I'm not going to drink those. I'm not going to support those. I'm not going to endorse those. You know, I mean, they're, they're running a, a, a good business. They're making some money. I know that for sure. I'm assuming they are. And Mama Mamed says, Coach Dolce live again. Bang, Mamed. Been a while. That's right. We're here. We're going hard. Friday. Friday's live day. Matthew, F you Dolce, best fitness channel on YouTube. Boom. And I appreciate that. You know what will help us, guys? Number one, if you click that like for notifications. And number two, if you leave a comment below. And when you leave a comment below, leave it in a couple words at least five words because of the YouTube algorithm, say for the algorithm, Dolce, but break algorithm into like two words, right? Five words. You need at least five words, evidently, in order for YouTube to think that you're not a bot. Crazy, right? This is real deal. Real deal stuff here. Leave a comment below. And then if you want to be a superstar, leave a comment on someone else's comment 
because engagement and conversation is one of the leading factors in YouTube actually paying attention to channels as amazing as ours because Lord knows I see these shitty channels out there with shitty producers putting shitty content and getting amazing, amazing views because YouTube is promoting them because they know the game. We simply want to spit fire. That's all. Help me spit fire. Engage in the comment section. I appreciate you guys. Um, David McLeod, David, shoot me a DM on Instagram today, my friend. I will get you hooked up, brother. Do not even worry about it. I got you. Joe, what's up, Coach Joe? Primal example. Boom. Looking swole with that yellow emoji. Frank Wells. What's up, Frank? I know you spoke about the mega event. Curious if you'd ever do a straight up strength training program. Sir, we actually do. We call it our level two. Uh, we call it a fitness trainer cert because it, and it essentially it focuses on entry level novices through exit level intermediate. What is an exit level intermediate? That would be a high school state champion athlete. That's kind of the, the level of an exit level intermediate. That would be someone who can double body weight back squat powerlifting IPF form. That would be an exit level intermediate. And it, and then we have our level three, which is a master trainer. That's teaching you how to work with elite athletes. Elite athletes would be like an NCAA um, D1 wrestler or football prior, or player or um, a, a, uh, a Ronda Rousey or a Vitor Belfort type of individual. So we have the, the, the level one nutrition coach, level two fitness trainer, level three master trainer. And Frank, that'll be awesome. And that's right. The mega event that we're talking about in June right now will be crazy. Mike Benavitas, sub coach, still out here crushing goals and getting ready for my special forces physical and stamina test for the U.S. Air Force. Trying to drop from 180 to 170 and stick to bodyweight workouts to kill it. You're the man. I appreciate that, Mike. Keep it up, my friend. Keep it up. Keep grinding. Keep crushing. What else? Carlos, my wife has an egg allergy, so we need to find a good egg substitute. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. You're leaving a great legacy. I'm working hard, man. I'm working hard for you guys. I am here to help you. That's it. Done deal. I appreciate you, Carlos. I'm always here if you need something else. Joe, primal example. It's good to think my, ha ha, my, my flex is a buy. All right. Isn't that crazy? David McLeod. Thanks, coach. You got it. Frank Wells. Let me know when you plan on doing one. Shut up and take my money. I will. We're looking right now into June just before things get crazy uh, for summertime, but we'll let you know for sure. I mean, the two hotels right here, right on the ocean, right on the ocean. One's in Asbury, one's in Long Branch. You want to talk about VIP treatment, man. I want, I want to do what Tony Robbins is doing for the fitness industry. I want to get you guys so God darn motivated. I want to bring in just an elite list of celebrity guest speakers. I want to have so many activities and modules and education experiences ready for you, but I want to get you all together in team building experiences. I want to sit down and have great dinners and maybe there will be a few cocktails um, consumed on given days. I want to get up and train with the sun. I want to do that. Those sunrise sweat sessions have cold pressed juices right after it and mindful, motivational meditation. Before we break, we get cleaned up and then bang, we're straight into education. We're straight into perspiration. We're straight into motivation. That's what this event is going to be. So I'm excited for that. Um, Logan, how do you combine kettlebell barbell training into a regimen such as weekly, et cetera? Well, easy. I mean, a kettlebell is it just weighted implements. I, I typically use a kettlebell in nearly every workout I do, there's usually something kettlebell centric. I mean, goblet squats with a kettlebell, um, kettlebell swings, uh, um, you know, Turkish get-ups, um, rotational work, um, um, you know, cleans and, and, and presses, um, rows, deficit rows. I mean, man, just get creative. The beautiful thing about the human body is we can get so creative. I'm always looking to use resistance to make my life harder. That's, that's really what the goal is here, right? That's, that's the, the, the whole concept of pro progressive resistance. I'm trying to do today what I could not do yesterday. What I do today will allow me to be strong enough to do that tomorrow slightly better. That's the goal. Tay says, thoughts for plateaus. Diet has been extremely clean since, de since December. No processed sugar, meats, and veggies primarily. Maybe you need a refeed day. You need a little bump. 
maybe you need a little calorie bump, 150% of what your normal intake is. And usually that's going to be a little bit more carbs that you dump in. Sometimes when we eat too, quote, clean too long, we get a little too stringent. You might look in the mirror and look a little, little flaccid, maybe not as full. I just had a, a big like two day refeed the last two days, man, I, I, I probably doubled my normal caloric intake. I feel like I'm 10 years younger. I've just bounced out of bed with so much freaking energy. The weights that I was using for the last two weeks or so feel like they're, they're, they're paper in my hand. Don't be afraid of the refeed, but I'm in the middle of my cut right now. So it's, it's very cyclical. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a calorie cycle. It's you run in waves. It's a carbohydrate cycle run in waves. I keep my, keep my protein relatively static all the way through, but I'm running these waves right now. So every time you see me on camera, I typically look different. The fucking crazy Look at, I mean, look, just look how bright that light is. The crazy light certainly doesn't help doing me any justice here. I look like powder, but at the same time, I'm, I'm chronicling all of my, um, every day I got, I got these massive gym mirrors. So every day I do like full body, um, you know, photos, progress photos. And if I can look back over like 10 days and just see how my body changes, I mean, one day, two, three days, I just fucking look huge and ripped. And all of a sudden I'd look like, totally flattened to pee. Like I gained fat somehow, but then three, four, five days, I'm like even more shredded than I've ever been. So if riding that wave is something to consider, um, Scott, the master trainer search sounds decent. Where can I find details? Scott, you'll hear about it more soon, but here's the thing, Scott, you can't challenge our master certification unless you've gone through at least the level one, which is our foundation. That is to become a nutrition coach. We will run our, our next level one certification in mid April here in New Jersey. You cannot test for the level three unless you've gone the level one first. The level one is the foundation. You must, must, must have that level one certification in order to be a master trainer simply because you won't have the, the scope of knowledge necessary on a nutrition and dietetic side. And when it's level one, it simply doesn't mean it's, it's like a freshman program. It's not basics. It is very high end. This is a college level course, the level one. It's called level one because it is the most important structured course that you need inside of our system. JS, starting three weeks to shredded Sunday, hoping it'll make my abs show with summer coming up quick. Thanks for the great content, Dolce. Bang, and it absolutely will. Guys and gals, remember, you can go to thedolcediet.com right now and sign up for our four-week or 12-week personalized online diet and exercise program. Summer is coming, as my good friend Dr. Roddy Ferguson just said on my IG Live um, stream. stream stream. If you don't start your summer diet by March 1st, you are behind. You are behind. I don't care what shape you're in. March 1st, you must start your summer diet. March 1st, you must start your summer diet because you have all March, all April, and then summer starts in May. Most people don't start that summer diet until mid-April. The day after Easter is one of the biggest days in fitness because that's when people are like, holy shit, it's sunny out. I can smell spring in the air. Memorial Day is almost here. Holy fuck. I'm 30 pounds overweight. What am I going to do? Now think about it. If we, if we, the average goal is to lose two pounds per week, it's very easy to lose two pounds per week. If you start now, let's say four weeks of March, four weeks of April, four weeks of May, and you're losing two pounds a week, you just lost 24 pounds of body fat. Let's say we put on four pounds of lean quality muscle tissue in that period of time. What are you talking about, weird Ethan Smith spamming our account, but the third paid to have it shipped to me? I need to refund my PayPal account. contact lenses. You're not even, what are you talking about? That's weird. I don't care about your coronavirus. You can keep the 25 for the contact lenses, but the $30. That's not for me, bro. You're on the wrong stream, man. We're a health and fitness company. We don't. Boom. It's weird. Some weird, you get these weird spam things that come through here. Someone complaining about contact lenses. Um, but anyway, 
So I forget what I was even talking about. So I'll just move on to the next question. Um, and sugarcoat and bring back the shame. We need the truth. I thought I, I thought I was kind of shaming everyone, wasn't I? No. You you want more fire? You want more fire? Lord knows I can spit the fire, baby. Um, MMA dude woke up early, hit a 45 minute list, eating good all day, going back later to hit a workout. Just had those poached eggs, Mike. When you're right, you are right. Summer bod 2020. Let's go. I love that. I love that. Ethan Smith. Okay. I'm sorry. Ethan Smith. There you go, my friend. All right. Wrong stream, my bro. Wrong stream. Man, my bad, man. You were fired up. You were fired up there. Somebody screwed you on contact lenses. How dare they give Ethan Smith back his money? Ladies and gentlemen, that's craziness. Um, I hope it all works out for you. Well, guys and gals, I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We got lots of changes coming to this YouTube channel, as you're going to see soon. Very excited to talk about the upgrade in production. Um, we're going to see lots of upgrades here over the next few weeks. So definitely make sure you have subscribed. You have clicked on that notification. And you're engaging with us. That's the one thing I ask you guys. Engage in the comments below these video when these videos post. Just for the algorithm, Mike Dolce, something like that. Try and make it five words, though. That's inside information, direct, direct from the Google, YouTube, um, conspiracy, tinfoil crowd. Your engagement has to be at least five words, at least five words, or they think you're a bot and it doesn't matter whether it's on this channel or your other favorite fitness YouTube channels. That's really what kind of the deal is. So I ask you, and you could just write in like, um, Five words for the algorithm. That's super cool. Whatever you think you need to do. I appreciate you guys being here. If you don't, I'm always going to be here giving you free content anyway. Trying my best to be the most honest, the most transparent, the most education heavy um, um, person on YouTube. I'm here to help you guys 100%. Jesse Lee. Who's coach 164 this morning, fight 155, April 11th, two consecutive three weeks of shredded, then a great performance. Bang, Jesse Lee, I am super proud of you. That's the way to get it done. Wow, you're only you're nine pounds over what? Like, like five weeks, six weeks to go. You are going to crush it. You're going to crush it. I'm so proud of you. That's what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, with the three weeks to shredded program. Be on weight before weigh-in day. How about that? And with summer coming up, whoo. Remember, May 1st, May 1st is that mental deadline for summer body. May 1st is the deadline. Let's get it. Bilal, I says, I love your content. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, B Malone, F you Dolce, in regards to fat loss, would it be best to engage in list fasted, then take a pre-workout immediately after and do my strength routine? No, no. I would do my lists. I would have a real meal. I would kind of get my life going. I'd have another little pre-workout snack, and then I would train. I would try and give myself, I personally want to give four hours between training sessions and usually two meals. That would be for best practices, best results. That's what we need to do. Um, Bilal, thanks, my man. Um, MMA dude, does heart rate matter for lists or is it okay to just make sure we walk quick and break some sweat? No, you don't have to walk quick. Walk slow, low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity. We're not trying to run that heart rate up because when you run that heart rate up, guess what happens? Boom. The body converts and start, starts using stored glycogen as fuel. We want to preferentially only use that stored body fat, which is why walking at slower rates and being fasted matters. We're talking alpha beta cells here. Well, I'll, I'm going to do a whole deeper video on this because I can't do it. It's probably going to be like a 20 to 40 minute video because I'm, I'm sure I'm going to rant and go on the side a few times. And I'm going to do it on our whiteboard for you guys to really discuss why this works so well, why it has to be while fasted and and the, the biochemistry behind this. A lot of people don't understand that. A lot of the fitness YouTubers don't understand that. Um, I'll, I'll break it down for you so you understand it. And a lot of the PhDs, they know it, but it's too compartmentalized in their education. They don't understand how to, how to kind of take this, this basic information that we all know is true, but then to apply it for, for, for real world outcomes. That's kind of a, a disconnect. A lot of my good friends who are PhDs and RDs, they, they don't make this connection. So I'm going to make this connection for you guys. 
JB, first time I'm hearing a live. Awesome. Well, JB, welcome. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. I try to, uh, of course, be honest. I try to be transparent. I try to answer every single question as it comes in. When I go live, I try to have a topic in mind. Today, I was talking about blowing a few million dollars for Davison Figueredo, um, UFC world title fight, just completely blown because he simply didn't uh, do his diet um, properly and, and get himself in check on weight, which is, I'm sure, heartbreaking to him. But at the same time, man, he worked his whole life for a world title fight. Here he has it, and he blew it. Uh, MMA dude, FYI, what's the scoop on FU Dolce thing everyone is saying? So that started a while back sometime last year. What I said is kind of for the algorithm. Leave posts down below. That basically says FU Dolce, which means effing unbelievable content. The FU is, is, is members of our community are highly engaged. They appreciate what we're doing. We're all a little crass. We're having some fun, but we're keeping it PG here because, you know, we're, we're good members, upstanding members of the community. Um, so we really try and uh, go um, out of our way to have a sense of humor, but still to kind of, you know, keep that, uh, you know, I, I call it, you know, job site humor where, you know, you, you want to have some fun here. But that's what the F means. It means effing unbelievable content. And that's just a little, you know, little wink, wink um, between us. So uh, feel free to do that. But if you leave comments below when this video posts, try and keep it five. Um, word, F U Dolce, smiley face, bang! The MMA dude just got it done. Five different words. So now the algorithm knows that you're not a bot. You just got registered by the YouTube algorithm as an actually live um, engaged member of the community. How cool is that? Whoa. Boom. $20 super chat donation from Marit J.O. Marit's Marit's a joy Vasquez. Marit the joy and I try and pronounce everyone's names correctly. So if if I if I, I I'm incorrect, I apologize. If you show me how to say it phonetically, I will say it correctly. But Maritza Joy Vasquez with the twenty dollar super chat donation to this channel. Vasquez, I will call you. Thank you so much. That means so much. It is never necessary. It is always appreciated. This is not lost on me. So thank you so much for that endorsement of the channel. I understand how valuable a single dollar is to each and every one of us who works our tails off to make money, to put food on the table, to provide for our family. So super cool of you. And thank you so much for that. If there's anything I can do for you, answering your questions and whatnot, I am here for you. I am here for you. Thank you. GGT and X, yo, Mike, who was the most genetically blessed UFC athlete you have worked with? Hire Mike Dolce, folks, instead of losing opportunities of a lifetime like UFC title shots. I would say, uh-oh, the wife is calling. You know the rule. Hello, wife. I am doing a live, a YouTube live right now. All right, call you back. Okay, bye. What is the rule? You know the rule when you're significant. This is a pro tip right now from a man who's been married for 20 years. Boom. The bicep of truth does not lie. 20 years with the same woman in the most amazing, amazing, you know, marriage relationship. It's just incredible. It's incredible. 20 years, 20 years deep, right? You answer the phone when your significant other calls, no matter what you're doing. If I'm talking to the president, if I'm talking to, 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 to Bill Gates, I don't care if I'm standing on the floor of the UN, my significant other calls, I'm answering the phone. Hey, baby, what's up? Yep, I'm doing this right now. Okay, cool, call you back. Boom, click, hang up. Do not disrespect those closest to you. Ever, ever. That's just the rule of life. Give them that courtesy of a quick hello. You doing okay? Everything's all right? No, non-emergencies? I'll call you right back. Bang, hang up. That's just the rule of life, guys and gals, and you will see how empowering it is and how much, is anybody mad that I just answered the phone right there? Is anybody mad or feel disrespected that I just briefly answered the phone when my wife called just to check and make sure that everything was okay? Is anybody mad? Nobody will ever get mad. And if anybody ever gets mad, poof, they're out of your life forever because you don't need to be around that type of garbage. Lord knows what their relationships are like. You don't want to be in a relationship with a person who is irritated by that. So, and I know you guys don't mind at all. That is the pro tip. Um, so GGTNX says, who's the most genetically gifted? I'll give you two. Two are Quentin Rampage Jackson and Chael Sonic. Those are by far the two most genetically gifted athletes I have ever had the, the privilege of working with. From a pure, raw, athletic 
talent perspective, those two guys are the greatest natural athletes I've ever been around. And I have been around the best in the world for over 20 years. For over, I mean, closer to 30 years now, but see, we'll stay over 20 because it's not quite 30. For over 20 years, I've been around the world's greatest athletes by far. Quentin Jackson, Chael Sonnen, V2 best. Um, MMA dude, word, F you, Dolce, boom, appreciate that. Chris Hertz, appreciate your straightforward advice and delivery. Don't need more sensationalism, hype for clicks, BS arguing and insults. You're the real deal and it's re refreshing and very helpful. Chris, thank you. I appreciate that. You know what sucks though? All of those clickbait channels with all the BS and all the drama and all the sensationalism, man. Man, those channels grow so fast. They do so well. They get all the views. They're getting 20, 30, 50, 100,000 views per video. And we're, we're, we're creeping along over here with, with one, two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 or so. But it's the quality of content that matters. And I'm not going to tell my soul. So the only thing I ask is you guys, those of you who are here, the, 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 the two, 3,000 or so of you who will watch this video, the only thing I ask is make sure you subscribe. Click that little no notification bell. It doesn't cost you anything. Give a thumbs up and leave some comments below. Just leave, co that's the one thing I'm going to start asking. Just leave some comments below. If you don't do it, I'm not going to get mad at you. I'll still answer your questions. I just asked if you want to help me out because I'm, I'm not going to go and, and, and turn douchebag like all these other, you know, idiot YouTubers out there and, and do that stuff. It's just, it's not natural to my personality. Now I'll call assholes out for being assholes for sure, for sure. But I'm not going to play that that douchebag game. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Just like I'm not going to be posting um um you know booty shots wearing a G string on my Instagram, right? Because that gets likes. <laughs> I, I just can't do that. It's not you know it doesn't suit my personality. And and Lord knows you guys don't want to see it. Um, FC, what are your thoughts on intermittent fasting? I'm actually going to do that video soon. Um, it was asked by my good friend, two-time MMA coach of the year, Mr. Dwayne Bang Ludwig. So I'm actually going to do a video next week on directly on intermittent fasting. So I'm going to reserve my answer, FC, for next week's video. Make sure you watch it. But if you're subscribing to the channel with notifications on, you'll know when the video comes out. Poof. See that? Um, Frank. Uh, I'm sure you'll see soon, but F my phone, lost your number, but 145, three weeks from today, 162 as of this easy work, bang, Frank Wells is crushing the game, 17 pounds over, three weeks out, bro, you're right where Mursad was, actually, he was like 62, about three weeks or so out, and then just slowly let that weight come down and soften just a little bit, man, you will be locked in within 10 pounds fight week, easy work, Frank, uh, and then Shoot me a, a DM, uh, and, and then let's uh, let, let's hook up, brother. Let's meet up. Um, Chris, I know aesthetics aren't necessarily your thing, but can a 54-year-old ex-athlete realistically expect to still put on size on his arms juice-free? Absolutely. Absolutely you can. Absolutely you can. Absolutely. I mean, don't expect to to put on, you know, three inches to your arms of lean muscle. That's not going to happen. Some people can't do that in the course of their whole life. But can you better build your muscles? Can you really get dedicated and focused and bring out all three heads of the tricep, both heads of the bicep? Can you really start to fill out the brachialysis, the tie-ins of where the forearm inserts into the upper arm? Absolutely you can. Can you sculpt out the, the, the your, your, your delt? To really have that 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 delineation between deltoid, bicep, tricep, brachialysis form, absolutely you can do that. You need to get more focused, more structured with your training, and you need your nutrition to be on point. Oftentimes, losing two percent body fat will make you look ten pounds bigger muscular wise without gaining a single ounce of lean tissue. You will look like you added ten pounds of lean muscle tissue if you simply lose two percent body fat. My strong suggestion to you, Chris. Go on the three weeks to shredded program, really get dedicated and focused. Let's lean out a little bit and really see what you're working with while you're building and sculpting those muscles. That will be huge. Anyone who wants to go to the Dolce diet.com promo code Dolce tube, all one word like YouTube, but Dolce tube, all one word to get a 10% discount. When you do sign up for the four week or 12 week program, remember summer's coming May 1st. We want to be ripped and ready and ready for summer by May 1st. Now is the time to start all new members who use promo code Dolce Tube will also be enrolled directly into my private Facebook group, 
where it's it's there's only like a thousand of us of us or so. I mean, we got hundreds of thousands of of, of social media followers and all that great stuff. I think half a million in totality of, of our, you know, our social um, empire. But there's only like I don't even know if there's quite a thousand people inside that three weeks to shredded group which is a small percentage of our base, but that's something so it's very intimate and it's really easy to engage and interact and support each other through the process. That would be my suggestion uh, if you really were, were super focused there, Chris. Yo, Mike, Angel, what's up? Yo, Mike, I have any ideas I want to bounce off you. Um, where'd it go? Sorry. What are your thoughts on Google survey pages to help me grow my nutrition counseling business? Uh, tell me more about that because Google keeps coming out with new great tools and resources. I'm sure it's great. Tell me a little bit more. Um, Mr. Russ, what's up, coach? Love the live chats. I love having chats with you guys. So thank you. Bilal, are there any specific training you would recommend for high schoolers? Training like education or training like, like a barbell squat? If you could be a little more specific, please. Um, any substitute for whey isolate on three weeks to shred it if you're out of protein? I just eat food if you can. I mean, a whey isolate is by far the most efficient, most easily digested of the protein category. That's why we suggest a cross flow, cold processed, micro filtered, grass fed whey protein isolate. Mark Ireland, what's up? MMA dude, coach, the reason you aren't blowing up like the fakers out there is because people don't like hearing the truth. The truth is brutal. You got to eat right, got to move the body. You know, that's the truth. That's the truth. That's why I didn't, didn't, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I didn't chase the keto um, wagon. I didn't chase the fasting wagon. I didn't chase the paleo wagon. I didn't chase all the bullshit wagons out there that all these fitness celebrities <laughs> are, uh, are riding on. Um, Da, da, da. Hing says, hey, Dolce, just joined your program. Super pumped. Hing, thank you. Welcome. Hing Young, everybody, is a the newest member to the Dolce Diet community. Bang, bang, bang. Hing Young, welcome. Whatever I can do to help you, I am here for you. Please make sure you're following this channel. Again, subscribe, click on that notification so you can join into these live chats. Also, follow me on Instagram. I just did a live chat earlier today on Instagram. So go to the Instagram channel, be a member there also. Whatever I can do to help you, I am here. JS says, Dolce. Have you tried to force your way back onto the Joe Rogan podcast? You'd undoubtedly get more people headed this way to subscribe. And I would love to hear the conversation. I appreciate that. Thank you. No, absolutely not. I respect Joe too much to try and force my way onto his show. Joe is amazing. He has the number one podcast in the world. I am very proud and honored to have been a two-time guest on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. I think our conversation would be amazing because now at this stage of my life and career, I don't have to worry about contractual obligations I once had when I was on there. I'm no longer actively working uh, with uh, uh, MMA clients so I can open source all of my weight cutting information. I can now tell stories about my career in the mixed martial arts world. And I can really, I, I think uh, at a very deep level, um, explain why our system is so different and so much more effective than all the other systems out there. Our system remains the most successful in all of combat sports with a 100% success ratio. And that is going head to head against PhDs and MDs and DOs and RDs and, and highly, highly, highly financed other, you know, fitness systems. Why does ours lead that category consistently when we do what no one else does? Everyone says our system is just too simple. Well, so is Warren Buffett's. That's, that's, that's kind of, you know, my answer. So now, I mean, Joe's amazing. I love listening to his show and all that good stuff. And if he ever wants me on, of course, uh, um, it would be an honor to, to go back on the yeah, MMA dude, JS. Yeah, man. Dr. Andy Galpin got some mad views. Yeah. Andy's awesome, bro. Uh, I, I love Andy Galpin. Um, Hey, Brian, I cannot train as hard as usual due to a hand injury. I have no appetite. How to gain appetite to get weight in the meantime. You can't squat. You can't squat. You can't leg press. What? You can't find a way. You can't wear a weight vest and do some walking lunges and high box step ups. Weight vest. I got a 40 pound weight vest. I got 20 sets of 20 pound chains. You can't do walking lunges with that. You can't do high box step ups with that. You can't, you can't go to a, 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 a barbell rack with a safety squat bar that you don't even have to really grab onto and bang out hard sets of squats that way or good mornings that you don't have to grab onto, right? You can do it. I know you can do it. Come on, where there's a will. That, I mean, that's just me sitting here in a chair. Imagine what I could do in a gym. 
right? You can't sit on a leg press machine and get after it. Yes, you can. Come on now. Let's do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Hing says, how to build up stamina to last 12 rounds in the ring? Should I run every day? No, I would walk and run. I would alternate low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity and higher intensity interval training. And those higher intensity, I go like a minute up, minute down, minute up, minute down, minute up, minute down. I do that for probably five minute warm up, 10 minute hit, five minute cool down. And I work to a 12 minute hit, to a 15 minute hit, to a 20 minute hit and slowly build it that way. Hang, I hope that helps. Bilal, I mean, body training or workouts. Um, the basics, high school athlete, you want to be the basics. I start all of our high school athletes out with body weight motions. If they can't perform body weight motions with proficiency, and this is what we teach in our level two Dolce diet certification um, the, uh, to be a fitness trainer, body mechanics, first and foremost, if you can't move your body through multiple planes and a biomechanically correct um, pattern, you have no reason to add weight. The MMA dude, welcome, Hing. Join the Facebook groups too. Absolutely, Angel. Okay, I'll send you an email about the survey um, page. Where should I send it? Send it to support. It will get to me. Um, Hing, thanks, MMA dude. Right on. All right, guys and gals, we are closing in on one full hour right now. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you guys. This is awesome. Uh, what a great community. This is so cool to hang out with you guys. Chris says, last one. Thanks, Mike. Longevity through quality. You're definitely becoming the Tony Robbins of training. Thank you. You should contact Tony's people for collaborations. I'd be willing to bet he knows who you are. Um, We'll see. We'll see how that goes. That would actually be great. And of course, you know, Tony is, is super inspiring. I mean, just every many, many aspects of life. So, and that's, that's a huge compliment. That's not lost on me also. So thank you for the very kind words. You know, we're just grinding over here, doing our best, doing our best to help you guys do your best. Appreciate you being here. Remember until next time. Boom.